Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this video. Welcome to a new week. Welcome to a new weekend. If you're watching these live, it's a new season here in Australia, the start of spring. It's a new year for us at Bayside Church. Our birthday is, you know, Father's Day weekend, what we're celebrating. And of course, here in Australia, it's another new prime minister. But, you know, they, those happen all the time. OK, uh, we are reading through the Bible in a year. We are endeavoring to do that to the best of our ability in a chronological fashion. It's not an exact science and there's always a little bit of crossover as we read through, but essentially we are up to the part in the biblical story nearing the end of the book of Kings and Chronicles. We're almost finished those where we have witnessed God's people coming out of Egypt with Moses. OK, uh, they have established themselves in the promised land. They became a kingdom with Saul, David and Solomon. But after Solomon's death, they split into two. The northern kingdom has been destroyed by the Assyrians. The southern kingdom has been spared by the Assyrian, from the Assyrian army because they've got a good king at the moment, a guy called Hezekiah who's relying on God. He's got Isaiah prophesying there with him. However, while God has spared Jerusalem and Judah, Judea from the uh, Assyrian army, he has said that one day, the day is coming, where another army will come in and they will be destroyed and that will be the Babylonians. So we're not there yet, but that's kind of, we know that's going to be coming sometime soon. All right. This week, we're essentially reading, I think it's eight chapters of narrative. It's right there on your schedule. Uh, we're going to be adding three more kings to our list. So after Hezekiah, we've got two bad kings. Okay. They repeat all the problems of the previous bad kings. The third guy is a guy called Josiah. Um, all up, he is king number 16 since Solomon down in the in Jerusalem, king number 16. And he's a really great king. You're going to enjoy Josiah. He will, in fact, be the very last good king of Jerusalem before they're taken out. All right. So that's basically what you're going to be reading. It's pretty self-explanatory as you read that this week. However, we're also reading the book of Isaiah. We're going to be finishing off Isaiah this week. And we're going to be reading a minor prophet called Nahum, which... Some of you have probably never read before. All right, Nahum, who the heck is he? All right, let's go. There are three things I want you to pay attention to this week as you go through the readings. The first is based in the narrative. Again, we're going to be reading a few chapters in Kings and a few chapters in Chronicles. Both of those books are coming to the an end, not quite yet, but they're ending fairly soon, Kings and Chronicles. I want you to read those chapters in one sitting, okay, because they're, they're, they're pretty well comparable, but I do want you to notice the difference between them. I have said this before, but it's pretty notable this week. When Kings is written, it's written very matter of fact, okay? There's not much hope in the book of Kings. Like when it talks about a good king or a bad king, it just says it how it is, okay? Chronicles that tells the same story has a quite a different vibe to it because remember Chronicles was written a lot later. It was written by the exiles in Babylon looking for forward to the day where they'd be restored. And so they were very hopeful. And so the Chronicles is more written with a with more positive bent on the stories. Okay. So any discrepancy, not discrepancy, any difference that you notice in the stories will reflect that. Chronicles is a far more positive book as it retells the stories of the king. So notice that difference in the narrative as you read Kings and Chronicles this week. Secondly, you're going to be reading Nahum. Nahum's a very quick book. You're going to read it in one sitting. Okay, it's only three chapters. Uh, we don't know a great deal about this guy. Nahum's not mentioned in the narrative. And uh, even the town that is from is not even mentioned. So we don't really know where he lived. But the best we can work out, he prophesies around about 650 BC. All right. His focus is not Jerusalem and Judea. He does mention them, but that's not his focus. His focus is actually prophesying against Nineveh and Assyria. So Nineveh is the capital city of Assyria, the guys who conquered the northern kingdom, all right, the baddies at the moment, okay? Those guys, he prophesies their destruction. Now, remember, Jonah, about 150 years earlier, did a similar thing. He went to Nineveh. And he said, listen, if you guys don't change your ways, God's going to come out and get you. They repented. Okay, they changed their ways. And they, in the meantime, in the last 150 years, they grew to become a massive world changing empire. Well, now Nahum is prophesying to the same group of people. And basically he says, that's it. You're done. God's had his way with you. All right. And your kingdom is going to come down. So that is the focus of his prophecies. I've said before, some of the prophets uh, uh, prophesied just to God's people. 
okay? Some have their primary focus to outside Nathan, uh, nations, and Nahum is definitely one of those. So enjoy that this week. Uh, he is going to declare their end, and that is also going to take place by the Babylonians. So what's happening behind the scenes is this, this the emergence of this great nation that's uh, called Babylon, okay? Which, by the way, is Babel in the Tower of Babel. The same word, it's Babylon. It's, it's literally the same word. That's the, the tale of Babylon, okay? So Babel or Babylon, that, that nation is rising. It's going to overtake Assyria, and then that's going to be the conquering force that is going to come down in uh, 100 or so years to take out Jerusalem, all right? So you're going to be reading Nahum. He prophesies there, and his prophecies come true after about 40 years, okay? That, that key figure, 40 years after a generation, that is when they're destroyed in about 612 BC. So that's Nahum. First of all, pay attention to the narrative. Secondly, enjoy Nahum. Read that in one sitting. And the last thing you're going to be doing today is congratulations, finishing off the book of Isaiah. And that's no small feat. It's 66 chapters. So well done. In the last few weeks, you've read a whole major prophet. And that is really commendable. And I loved reading Isaiah this week. We're up to a lot of the positive stuff, all right? While Isaiah is prophesying a bit of doom and gloom for Jerusalem because one day they will be destroyed, okay? And he says, your sins have separated you from God. He says to them, your righteous acts are like filthy rags before him. There's a bit of doom and gloom there, to be sure. But overwhelmingly, he is prophesying hope for some time in the future, okay? And there are four things that really got my attention, four new things, okay? Here we are this week in a new season, okay? It's a new time. He prophesies four new things that will take place when their hope is restored. The first thing he mentions is that they will be a new Jerusalem, they will be the type of Jerusalem where the sun and the moon no longer shine on them, but God himself will be their light. Now, that sounds to me like it's a hint that they're going to be a supernatural kingdom in the future. Okay, I don't think they understood that at the time, but he's saying, listen, the sun and the moon aren't going to shine on you. God himself will be your light. So he's prophesying the restoration of Jerusalem, but it's actually going to be a new type of Jerusalem, okay? He at the same time prophesies, number two, a new covenant. Wow, this is the first time I think we've noticed this. A new covenant is coming. It's an everlasting covenant. It is a covenant of peace, a covenant of love that he promised to David. So a new covenant is also on, on its way. In the last couple of chapters, he prophesies a new nation that will rise forth. All right, that God will call a whole new nation and give birth to a nation in a day. And from among that new nation, he will appoint priests, even if they're not Levites. He will appoint them and make them to be Levites. Whoa, okay, so there's this new nation emerging in line with the new covenant, the new Jerusalem, a new nation. And finally, get this, he declares a new heaven and a new earth. New heavens and a new earth, the last couple of chapters there. So all these four things are tied in together, which makes us suspect that a new heaven and new earth is not the prophecy of a new planet or a new physical solar system. It's an idiom or it's a picture, it's a type of this new covenant world that's going to come into existence, all right? He's creating a new Jerusalem, a new nation, a new covenant is part of that. And he's creating a new heavens and a new earth where the old will be forgotten and it will be replaced by something new. So there's a lot of prophecy this week about new things coming. And of course, let me remind you again, while the prophets were somewhat aware of what they were saying, 1 Peter 1 makes it clear that they did not understand the timing of what they were saying, and they didn't really understand the true nature of what it was they were prophesying when they predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories, the glorious things that were to follow those sufferings. So Isaiah, while I've, I've said before in my uh, prophecy video, uh, prophets were aware of their audience and they were cognizant. They had an understanding of what it was they were saying. But Isaiah here, the, the true fulfillment of what he's saying is not going to come about in 100 years or 200 years. It will be an, another, well, uh, five, 600 years until Jesus comes where those things really start manifesting themselves. Okay, so a major work this week. Enjoy the last few chapters of Isaiah and uh, the language there. A lot, Again, a lot of the language you're going to be reading in Isaiah uh, is going to be very familiar to you because we see the apostles in the New Testament use it later on. All right, going to be fun.
Take notice of the narrative. Three more kings basically coming up this week. Enjoy Nahum. You've got to read that in one sitting. It's only three chapters. And Isaiah, full of good stuff, gets your highlighter out. All right? Enjoy this week's readings. Next week, we get into a guy called Jeremiah, which is a very significant uh, prophet, another major prophet. And uh, again, his very similar prophecies about the fall of Jerusalem, but hope for a new covenant and hope for a new start sometime in the future. Bless you guys. 10 minutes. I'm done. Uh, Enjoy your weekend and get out and have some sun. Bye.